Tally here, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Banner Saga, where we're going to continue where we last left off. So we now have 16 Renown, and we have 32 Varl. And what does this button do? Ooh. And Days of Supplies 100. So yeah, we're going to go down to the docks, and we're going to continue what we were doing. Exciting times. For near. A familiar Varl steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Obin! You're looking ancient! Comes with being old. And if there is Volnia now, there must be Hakon. Must there? It <laughs> must there. <laughs> Look at my stare! He's gonna have one of those voices. Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yucks. At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Jorander demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I'd no sense that you were so far from home. Just returning from Arenberg, in fact. Arberang, sorry, a bit drunk. <laughs> and glad for it. <laughs> so it doesn't suit him. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering. Golden wolf head emblazoned on red. The king of men, or someone on his behalf. A k the king's whelp. The king's son, Ludin. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit his capital. He visits ours. That's how you make alliances these days. It's a, mis it's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Harkon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Harkon. Then you're going to Grofheim. I have a distinct feeling I finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but... Ah, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gate. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. Uh, where is Mogar? Hakon, have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few, but others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogar. You see you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world, the sort of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be more than interesting than most years, you think. Oh, that's right, because giants live for a very long time, whereas, of course, humans do not. So, yeah, we're going, I think we're going back up. Oh, here we go. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Vonia's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Harkon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. I'll try and get a better voice for Harkon. <laughs> Definitely, or Hakon, it's probably Hakon. So, I think we get a choice. Click a talk icon to converse with one of your heroes. Let's have a drink with Hakon. Or Haken. I'll say it's Hakon. Scrivener! I mean, Scrivener! Wait, maybe it should be really deep, like, Scrivener! <laughs> no! <laughs> Hello! No, that's terrible. We'll just, we'll just go with the somewhat southern accent. Scrivener! You find Haken in a mead hall, surrounded by other Val. Strand is no stranger to Val, but rarely sees as many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flogging. Vonir is the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. And every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What this time? When I got here the great hall was already full of bodies. Well, we added a few more. Ha! <laughs> humans. I guess if only lived as long as a Yoxfart, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. It's not too late to start trying, Haken. Haken lets slip a low chuckle. 
Any vile could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swathe through dredge at Vonia's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grofheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the mead house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Yeah. Alright, so we couldn't talk to the other person. No, we can! Let's go talk to this dude. Or, or chick. Dude or dudette. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Val who must be working for Ludin. A woman in red eventually waves you over and strand stands nearby, arms crossed. Oh, it must be Melisandre. Greetings, Prince Ludin. Yes, you're with Vonia. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Vonia a long time. I'll be joining you back at Grofheim with my guards. Ludin looks up for the first time, and the woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying tithes to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? Do 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 do. I like this one. I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit. A vile historian? <laughs> Don't you already know? Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting it throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Ludin takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ungracious, you aren't certain. Maybe both. A formality, mostly. Vonia came to our capital in Arborang, and now we go to the Vile's capital in Grofheim to cement the grand alliance for the next age of men in Vile. You sound unconvinced. There's no need for it, and it's damn cold up there. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. Well, bugger me. <laughs> At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell the sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply levers. All there, just as promised, to your mild surprise. You wonder if Eric had anything to do with that. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vonia is already here. A while later, Ludin and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. That's funny, we just got, like, a ton of renown. And we lost the supply because it's been a day. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Moga steps forward. Vonia's quartermaster, if you recall cor correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. We're ready! You follow Moga and join the others. Usually the smaller door set into the gate would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are not best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to a draw to a draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated tired people. It would summarize this strand well as a whole, you think. I love how there's a few spelling mistakes in this. I keep tripping over some of the words. It is hilarious. Alright, let's see what's about to happen. Am I about to have a lot of mead? Oh no, we're leaving Strand. We're on a journey. And we've come with 366 morale and 85 fighters. And we've got great morale. It's pretty good. So yeah, a day's gonna pass, so that's two days. So yeah, this is when we're in travel mode. So travel mode is where we use up our supplies and the days turn really quickly. It's really beautiful this game, and look at that city up there. That that's really pretty. I love this. Alright. Oh yeah, and we'll get some random events along the way. The caravan stops for the day. Oh wait, it's probably narrator voice. A, g a gift, says Moga, cracking open meat casks. From our gracious friend, the Governor of Strand. Hours pass with ferocious laughter as the mead is passed throughout the camp. We should toast to Vonia. Toast to Vonia! You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between man and Val. The others join in. Ludin's expression is like a stone wall, but the others laugh at your exaggerations. Eventually you sit down beside Vonia. We should drink merrily. Now let's have a chat with Vonia. 
Thanks for the speech, Slurs Vonia. <laughs> what was that it? Ah, oh, no, here we go. Looks like you didn't have to miss out after all. Thanks to Mogur, I thought the damn governor would never shut up. Did he give you the history of his entire family? He tried, then he asked me to clean up his mess. For your benefit, turns out. I'd have given the job to you too. God, there's no joy in politics. Speaking of, what happens after this business with Luden? Hopefully the boys goes back to Ar Arborang on his own. And I can take out some frustration on Dredge or something. Starting to sound like Haken. You don't like the life of a diplomat? <laughs> don't you miss the fight, Uben. Hey, <laughs> you down your meat instead of replying. Funier slouches and shakes his head. There's no great joy in killing Dredge. But there's pretty sure this nonsense is some scheme between the two kings to force some kind of lineage. Used to be warriors would follow you for what you've done. Isn't that why they follow you now? Is it? Or is it because I'm the next in line? These lines are getting muddy, old Varl. They've always been muddy, Vonya. Vonya stares into the campfire. Lost in thought? You leave him to it. Well, well, well. So he's the next in line for the giants. So he's like a giant prince, basically. Your eyes groggly. No. <laughs> you rise groggly. The campsite a casualty of merriment. Moga is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Ludin stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up. You nudge the Fulnir. You're needed. <laughs> Got it. It's hard to kind of maintain that kind of the sim similar accent whilst alternating the characters. Ah, it's Ludin. Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Vonia releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grofheim? Ha! We're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on the map. Yes, show me the map. Oh my god. I'm so the Kylo Ren of this game. <laughs> oh, I love it. Better drink some more V. Mm. There's an energy drink in New Zealand called V. Yes, I drink energy drinks. It's so bad. I get terrible headaches and I get an atrocious sleeping pattern. No, it's a world map. Drag the map to look around. A portrait icon shows where your caravan is in the world. You can also tap on any location to get some history about it. Ooh, my favorite. You guys are going to be in for history lessons. Oh, yeah! Alright, let's have a look. Rundwall! In the great... In the first great war, men and Vara fought viciously for Rundwall's abundant farmlands and coasts, overflowing with fish. Just so you know, I'm actually speaking this from the perspective of Udin, who is a historian. Only with the help of the Menders would Rundwall eventually become the home of Arbarang, the capital of men, and Manahar, where the Menders could gather their council. Sweet. Well, that was fun. Alright, let's have a look at these individual locations. We won't do it all... We won't do them all at once. Strand. As close as anything comes to a bastion of racial tolerance, both men and Val compete to scratch out a living in this, the biggest trade city along the west coast. Many people still believe the god Dingler. Dingler still watches over it, granting good fortune. Ooh, I like this. What's this? The Vast. The waters to the west were a name not for their reach, but for their depth. Longships lost even somewhat close to shore are best considered gone to the depths forever. I see, so they can't actually reach cross because it's too deep. I like that. The Spine Isles? Nah, that's not really relevant right now. Where are we? So where are we heading? So this is the path we're taking here. Karl's Fjord. The fjord splitting off into Varl territory was named after Karl, the only Varl to ever become governor of Strand. I'll be only for a short time before the title returned to the human families whose ancestors originally built the city. You better did. Alright, so we just passed that kind of area because we're crossing through here. And we crossed the Red River. Some historians have speculated that the Red River was simply a counterpart to the Blue River. 
named by unimaginative explorers. Anyone who fought in the Great War, at least the first one, could tell you that it's where the Val and mankind came to an impasse, neither side able to get a foothold. The river so full of corpses that it literally ran red. And that's the river source all the way in that direction. Alright, and we're heading to Vider Viderfell. Named bad weather, the gales that blow in from the bay and around the mountain peaks keep Vedril, v Vederfell in a generally unpleasant state. What really cemented the name was the kind of person who would live there. Main cast out from Strand for one reason or another. We have nowhere else to go. Alright, so we'll continue our quest and then we'll do some more history in time. So let's click on the dude. I said let's click on the dude, man. Now just press the escape button. Oh, what? Oh, okay. So do we actually need to, like, do something? What do I have to do here? Oh, man. Oh, here we go. There's an X button. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We head north, then east, past the forts. Grove Hunt's far from Strand. Going to be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skirmistead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. Stays covered in ice all year. Would tear up the longships. Too bad though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Skirmistead. A half sunken city crawling with dredge prints. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? <laughs> it's, it's this guy. <laughs> I love it. Luden exhales through the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bets aside the tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the ant hill, Vonir. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter wick than Haken. Thanks, Vonir. <laughs> Thanks, Vonir. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, Volnir. Let's get moving. Another half day to Vetterfell, if we're lucky. We're gonna be so lucky with my handlebar mustache. Yeah. Camp. Camp is where you manage your caravan. During travel, you can enter camp at any time by tapping the camp button on the travel hood. While at camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip them in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Each passing day will use supplies to so only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Tap leave at the bottom of the campsite when you are ready to get back on the road. Nice music. Alright, let's go to the hero's tent. I want to upgrade my heroes. Heroes reborn! Right, so we click on the peoples and they get promoted. So I can increase certain things. So we can click on the ability button to learn about the unit's abilities. Right, so he could potentially learn... Return the favor. Attacks the shield bang and loses one point of armor for each strike he makes. Ooh, that could be handy. Handy, it's handy. So we've got no points available for Moga because we haven't used him in combat. Ah, but we've got Gunnolf. But we've got no points available, apparently. What's this? What's this? A ranger caught off his car. Gunnolf. Ah, oh, I see. He has two kills. Right, yeah. So this guy has no kills and he has a promotion. So what shall we do? Increase your item rank or build higher stats. Okay. Oh, I see. So it costs Renown to promote the hero, and then we got those perks. And then we can choose an extra two places to put things. What's this? What is that? What is it? Hello? I have no idea. Um, so what I'm going to do... Whew, probably go for more strength, because he's really powerful. Like, he's really good. I'd say that's pretty good for, for Gunolf. <laughs> Ludin doesn't have any kills yet. Hakon neither. Alright, so we'll go back to the shadow. Alright. Oh, and turn order. We can actually change the turn order. 
All right, so having him go first isn't necessarily the best idea. Uh, maybe we'll go for the guy that... Yeah, I kind of like this order better. So we've got three giants and one human. How hilarious. All right, we could leave. We could rest. I think... Oh, do we need to rest? Maybe for a day. We'll rest for a day. So we rested, and then we'll leave. We don't need to do any mock battles, though. So it's not going to improve anything. Badrfell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just man driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. Oh. Well, he gave a brief description of the area anyways, which is cool. Now <laughs> look at them, they're just like, oh, there's an army coming in. Well, especially when it consists of mostly giants. Where are all the women in this game? That's what I'm wondering. By Harderborg! No, wait. By Harderborg! That's a lot of varl for some missing cattle! <laughs> that doesn't look like the kind of voice you would have. What? A couple days back, sent word to Strand about the cattle. Didn't expect an army. He looks pleased with himself, until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. Where have your cattle gone? Wouldn't know! My boys seen men up the hills carrying them away. Don't know many men who can hoist a whole cow by himself. Scarflings out here, maybe. Could they have Vara working for them? Not from what ah, the governor told me. I'm going to have a look around and get camp set up. The peasant spits, his eyes anxiously darting about as the caravan sets up tents. We'll be here no We'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. Oh, hundreds of val? Are you serious? <laughs> Suddenly, the peasant's voice actor changed. <laughs> whatever you're willing to sell. No, whatever you're willing to sell. He needs like a wise voice, because he has a wise look. You're thinking of squatting? Not enough room for a couple of hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Sh <laughs> Shut up! Hear that? Where's Ludin? It's fate. Sounds like fighting and something else. Hagon takes off at a run. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to end the episode here, guys. I know it's really cheeky to end it at the start of a battle, but it's going to be fun. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, surprise. So find out what the surprise is next time, and I will see you then. Tally-ho till then, guys.